from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Wow Report. Counting down the top 10 things of the week that make us go wow. wow. Here is Tom Campbell, our Chief Creative Officer. How James St. James, uh, editor of the Wire Report, and myself, Ventor. Uh... Ben, who are you? Ventor. Ventor Bailey. This Ventor is the release Balin. of the new Ventor Balin. Ventor I, Balin. I hear group tours come by sometimes, and they were introducing our building, and they were set. They said it's owned by Randy Barbado and Benton Failey. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. Uh, so, uh, someone used to call us uh, fetid, rancid and fetid. R Randy and, <laughs> Randy and Fenn is rancid and fetid. Oh, but my, wow, I've decided man. my drag name, if ever, is going to be fentanyl. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. yes. Of course. Right? I come to slay. Let's get on with the countdown. Number 10, Tom. Number 10. I did something I rarely do. I watched something on Apple TV. I don't know why, but Apple TV has no brand draw to me. I know they do excellent things, but they seem very serious and very humorless and very, I don't know, or, or the humor is Maya Rudo. Anyway, I broke down, I have it, you know, I, I pay for it, I guess. I saw the Supermodels documentary series about Christy, Cindy, Linda, and Naomi. Has anyone watched it yet? I binged all four episodes too, and it's the only thing I've ever watched on Apple Plus. I binged it. James, no? Um, no, but I've been following the, uh, especially Linda's comeback this past couple months, which has been fantastic. I turned it on and I watched all four episodes. And it is, you know, executive produced by them. So you're kind of like, oh, am I just going to see a lot of blowing stuff? smoke up each other's ass? But the truth is, is they are friends, which is, you know, and also it's like they are they are a core group of of a lot of super, you know, but they were and their friendship is also the story that has lasted 35, right. 40 years. And I was so moved. It's by the last shot and not to give anything away they're, they're They're posing for like a final shot at the end and they sort of show them. And but you've been through this journey with them and just to see them in their stride and their different styles, just sort of like walking. It's so amazing. They oh, um, they closed the was it the Versace show? They closed the show. Maybe it was Valentino. I think they closed together uh, and, and they walked out. Well, yeah. yeah, they did. It was Versace, I think, where they okay. sang the the freedom song. The two things I got from this is I've always thought Linda Evangelista was a bitch because of that comment she made. I won't get out of bed for less than ten thousand dollars a day. Yeah, this really made me think differently of her and second i couldn't stop thinking about which one of these three were the ones that pushed james st james down the stairs that one time it was it was through all three of them it was. <laughs> that makes sense by the way by the way they acted listen they are honest about everything they don't dwell it's not like the um gogo's dog behind the music years ago where you just were like oh my god they're so awful yeah but they have perspective now they're so and, and listen, I came at this also. I know who they are. Everyone knows who they are. I'm not like, you know, with all due respect, I'm not like the guy who's like, supermodels, oh my God, changed my life. I had a Vogue magazine in my bedroom. I wasn't that guy. But they were everywhere. And they were, they're so beautiful to look at. And they're beautiful to look at now. And Linda Evangelista definitely has the most, you know, drama in her life. She's she's had have suffered health problems. She had an unsuccessful marriage with a man who turned out to be very, predatory i was very critical of her a couple months ago i don't know if you remember when she um inserted herself into sort of uh the the zeitgeist again by say, talking about the cool sculpting problems that she had and the weight that she gained and how she couldn't model anymore nobody was asking her to model and then she turned it around and turned it into this spectacular comeback and Running has been it. modeling has been on the cover of vogue mm -hmm. since then. Oh, british vogue has been yeah. walking in all the shows and everything and she's been she just did that talk with fern malice at the y the 92nd street y she is really likable and when you hear the backstory of what the what was going on i feel bad that i was as critical as i was because yes. i've come away this past couple of months thinking what a wonderful woman she is and how deserving she is and vulnerable she is by yeah. actually sharing these things yeah and, and, you know, 
what a, what a, just what a fascinating cultural moment it was. You know, it just, it was sort of a, that moment, like Anna Wintour, I think, once talked about it in a film we did, and she was saying that, you know, there was a feeling at that point that celebrity was a little bit over and movie stars were sort of being bashful. And so they- well, how, dare, how dare Anna say that when Anna was the one who was responsible for bringing celebrities over models? <laughs> But back then they were showing like they showed Julia Roberts in the 80s and 90s. She wore big jump coats and Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer and those people from the world. But they'd all go down low. You know, they, yeah. they would dumb it down. down so they would feel like they were actresses of the people. Of the and, people. And, 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 and the, the supermodels were like, we're here for the glamour. I it, think it was, great carpet drama comes from the supermodel moment. Sorry. Yeah. There's there's a there's the, Cindy talks about Cindy's the most pragmatic. She's she's almost like a businessman. She's just like boom, 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 boom. And uh, there's a funny line. Naomi said, "I know how to loosen her up. It's called tequila." <laughs> so they would like get her messed up. But she talks about when she was Richard Gere. She talks about that relationship a little bit. And she was young and kind of was just fitting in. But she goes, "He, invite, I got to go to the Oscars because I was with Richard." And I thought, well, I guess I should do what her supermodel do is wear some clothes and look pretty good. And she went to Versace and had that red dress. We all remember that red dress. And she goes, "And I was." kind of credited with bringing fashion back to the Oscars. And she's not wrong. And she says one other thing at the very end, they're, they're putting her in hair and makeup and she says her makeup guy. And this sounds bitchy, but it's hilarious and it shouldn't be bitchy. That's It's also woman power in a weird way. And she says, I've had a nickel for every time, every minute I've been in hair and makeup. She goes, oh wait, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but Naomi Campbell talks mm -hmm. about, she doesn't talk about the phone throw per se, but she talks about her sobriety. She talks about having tough times and not dealing people well, learning from it, which is, you know, we all have our ups and downs, but with this, the view of it all. And Christy Turlington, who I didn't know anything about, who Linda says, they're very close. She goes, Christy's the most beautiful of all of us. And you just spend the rest of the time watching her face and her talk and how mature she was, but also how campaigns used to be. It used to be about being, getting a campaign was everything. And how at one point Christy was like, couldn't do anything else because she was, Calvin Klein's eternity spokesperson and how Cindy kind of left high fashion and was like making calendar. You know, she talked about how she did sports illustrated. They treated her badly. This was the issue. So she goes, I'm going to make my own calendar, you know, and she's has her own makeup line. And, you know, Cindy's one of the originators of all that. Anyway, I can't even begin to capture mm. it except the feeling I, I was so surprised and moved and touched. Uh, and it's just the right length too, because it needs to be long enough to have texture. But I, I don't want and anyway. And you know, and you get to checklist all the designers are in it, and it, it's just really rich. Anyway. Oh, love it! Can't wait to see it. That's streaming on oh, Apple TV, right? But what's the supermodels? The, the supermodels. Um, <laughs> James, number nine. It's your turn. Number nine. I started watching American Horror Story: The New Season, Delicate which is on the Kim Hulu. Kardashian season. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we'll get to that in one second. Um, you know, the last couple seasons of American Horror Story have really picked up and we've talked about it on the show uh, sort of endlessly. There was the season with Macaulay Culkin playing the methed out vampire in, in uh, Provincetown that was absolutely genius. Then after that last year, there was the season about the last call serial killer in early 80s New York around the time of the rising AIDS crisis. And that was done really beautifully and really nice. And Ryan Murphy is sort of on a roll. And so I was going to give this season a chance. I was very excited for it because I, you know, he, I'm, I'm pro Ryan Murphy now, all of a sudden after all these years. And this is, it's Emma Roberts plays a movie star Ooh, who is trying to get pregnant. And she's going to an in vitro fertilization place with her husband. And it's sort of spooky. And the doctor is sort of spooky. And you get the feeling that we're entering into a Rosemary's Baby uh, type of situation that's about to happen. There's only been one episode so far. There's been two, but I've only seen the one. And But the, the takeaway from all of this is that Kim Kardashian plays her PR guru. And she's playing it like Kris Jenner. Just everything sort of ties together in this episode because <laughs> she's totally channeling her mother. You're doing wonderful, sweetie. You're doing wonderful. Just that Kris Jenner voice. She looks like Kris Jenner. She's acting like Kris Jenner. It's absolutely spot on and kind of perfect. She is not an actress. There's no two ways about it. But Kim has a charisma. She has a watchability. And she has a glamour about her. That one thing, and this is probably a fault of Ron's, but why is her name Siobhan? 
Well, that, there you go, right there. Because there is, if there's anybody on the planet who is less of a Siobhan, it's Kim <laughs> Kardashian. There is nothing Irish and sort of down to earth about Kim. But so, yes, the Siobhan thing is a little weird. But like I said, there, there's just a watchability factor to anything that Kim does. And when she's on the show, like you are, you, you're doing double, triple takes and your mouth is hanging open in every scene that she's in. So I am telling people to give this one a watch, but also go back and do some of the old American horror stories. There's some rotten, there are rotten ones in there, but there's some really good stuff too. It's just in the trajectory of the Kardashian tale and the Kim Kardashian career. Of course, she, Brian Murphy's a genius. Hey, Kim, come and do a season. It doesn't really matter if it's good or bad because we'll be talking about it and watching it for all the reasons you're saying. Well, that, and good it was, for Kim for doing it. Thing with, with Macaulay Culkin. He was like, Macaulay, come do your Michael Alec impersonation again and be a messed out has been. And Macaulay's like, okay. And it's just absolute genius. He knows. I think they call it was, stunt casting. I was going to say, Ryan Murphy is a genius when it comes to stunt casting. Hmm. And I was very stunt. You said stunt. I thought you said nothing. Okay. <laughs> and that no, stunts, Tom. From Cunning the very stunts. beginning with, with Jessica Lang in those first couple of seasons, uh, Lady Gaga. I mean, yeah, you know what Gaga. Gaga. he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, American Horror Story Delicate. Um, it's on uh, FX on Wednesdays, right? And streaming on Hulu. Number eight. Number eight. I have loved The Morning Show, seasons one and two. It's been two years waiting for a new season. And I'm calling this segment The Morning After Show because I want to know how something so good could become so bad, ah! so wretched. I could not believe my eyes. Like, oh, they don't get me wrong. They spent mega bucks on it. They but do. like, just... So, okay, so The Morning Show is about kind of two rival anchors, uh, Alex, played by Jennifer Aniston, and Bradley, played by Reese Witherspoon. And then their sort of nemesis, or their sort of puppeteer, or controller, whatever you want to call him, or ta antagonist, Corey, who's played by Billy Crudup. And I've just put it together. A, B, C. Alex, wow. Bradley, Corey. Anyway. And so it's sort of set in a morning show situation. And I don't know what has happened. I mean, I guess the first two seasons, the news was sort of in the background. It wasn't really about the news at all. And right. I think they've made a critical decision, and I would say error, because now it's about the news. So they're talking about COVID and you're like, Jesus, that was so long ago. It just doesn't feel tonally right. And then there's the scene, um, Bradley's getting an award, a, a sort of a, pre, a First Amendment award. And she's getting that award because she was in the United States Capitol building on January 6th when she became separated from her camera crew and reported the insurrection on her iPhone. And that's why she's getting an award. And it just feels icky. People died in that. And just to sort of use it for the reason why you're getting a fictional Freedom of Speech award, it is just... It's, I don't know, it's just very off. Anyway, there's a new character this season played by John Hamm. So James will be watching, I guess. Yes. And he basically is Elon Musk meets Jeff Bezos. He's a big uh, billionaire. I forget why he's a billionaire. But of course, he's trying to buy the network because the network's in the tank financially. And he also has a space program. All right. So Jennifer Aniston is flirting with him and she's the anchor who's going to go into space. And then it takes the weirdest turn because Bradley is very into abortion stories and they're sitting on a jet talking about how terrible it is about abortions. And it is terrible about abortions, but it's just a little weird sitting on a private jet talking about these things. And although Reese Witherspoon, who's Alex, has been training for months to get ready to go on this space program. At the last minute, she decides she's not going to go. And she's going to go and report Bradley's abortion story instead. And so suddenly, into the breach, steps Bradley. Like, no training, no preparation. And the next scene, Bradley and the John Hamm character and Billy Crudup are in a space capsule leaving Earth on a sort of space launch and it's like it's very expensively done so it looks great but it's like 
Weird. Is William Shatner on board with them? <laughs> right. Well, the William Shatner moment is when th they get into, they take off their seatbelts and they're flying around in zero gravity conditions. And uh, Reese Witherspoon makes her speech, which is that after a pandemic and a war in the Ukraine, and then suddenly it goes, and they lose signal. But again, it just feels so weird to be using... It feels both dated and totally off. Fake, fake. To be using really tragic live real events for your fictional story. Do you know? It just, it, well, it Law feels... and Order for many, 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 many years has taken rip from the headline stories and fictionalized them in that format. Mm -hmm. Have you yeah, ever seen it's, any it's of them? I don't think it's so much that, that they're taking the, the real news. It's like you said, that it's a tonal situation, that it just right. doesn't feel like, and that, that nobody, nobody wants a COVID story at this point. No. Like nobody, nobody, we want to forget it. We want to move on. I don't know that I'm going to watch the rest, but that's uh, streaming on Apple Plus. Meanwhile, over on WOW Presents Plus, uh, the House of Avalon's new show, Avalon TV, is coming soon. It's coming uh, to our presents press on October 9th. So you definitely want to catch Looking that. Looking forward to this one. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll carry on with counting down the things of this week that made us go. Wow. wow. Yeah. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Well Report. Fenton here with Tom and Jane St. James, of course, and Blake. We're counting down the top 10 things of the week that made us go, wow, we've reached number seven. Number seven. Oh. I'm about to say some controversial things and some things that aren't so controversial. Let's start with the not so controversial, I think. I find The Bachelor <laughs> as a concept disgusting. A bunch of women fine for one man if they don't get that one man then they're sad and worthless and i get that we all can channel our rejection different ways trust me now so they're doing a golden bachelor i have not seen it this is the leading up to it these are my impressions leading up to it i may watch it over the weekend and talk to you about it but most of my impression has come from the fact that on sunday after i have a morning meeting and i go with my friends to Mel's drive-in diner on Sunset, very famous. And it had been taken over. It was washed in gold. There were gold, instead of red ropes and red carpets, there was gold and there was a golden Mustang. And inside all the pictures of the Hollywood people had been covered with, with golden bachelorettes. And then they had a screen with just playing on a loop of, of the promo and of promo questions. And it's The Bachelor whose name, does it even matter really? I have it down here. <laughs> no, I just read one thing where it said, don't call him a silver fox. No, <laughs> I, I read one thing where he's like, I promised my daughters and granddaughters that I wouldn't kiss him in the first night. And I kissed them all. It's like, ew. <laughs> this is the controversial part. He's an exceptionally well-kept 72 year old. Although they make sure you see his little hearing thing from the back, you know, like, like do things. But he's kind of a stud. And, and every, everyone deserves love between 60 and 75. But in this particular promo thing that was playing over and over again as I was eating my eggs, they all had all that fake long hair that didn't look like it belonged to them. And they were all wearing black evening gowns that had clearly been picked for them. Like they not, they don't all have the same dress. So they'd all gone to a rack. It looked like one of those dresses where you can turn it into a halter top or an over the, you know, just, <laughs> and the nine and, in one dress. And there's something about, this is all the promo stuff. I've not seen the show yet, but like there's something about that fake drapery of hair and, you know, <laughs> and real woman skin and neck stuff. Listen, I've got it all, but there's something about seeing that presented in that crazy, over-the-top, glamorous, you know, way that is really upsetting. There was no one there with like, you know, medium-cut uh, bouffant with a Chanel suit on. They're all like, these creatures of reality television. I just think by sixty, you might want to still have sex, but I don't know that you want to humiliate yourself on television. <laughs> in That's what I think well, you learn. learn about hope that. springs eternal if you're single. I mean, Jesus. Uh, do you think this uh, has anything to do with the fact that you might be gay? Like this sort of uh, all is, of is it. it but again, this is bad. This is just me being honest. But it's like the visuals were like, ugh, 
it just, everyone felt exploited. It felt like the other side of Brooke Shields and uh, and Pretty Baby, you know, where like little girls are painted up like little like Taj and Tara. And now you have older women just tarted up. It just was very weird. I'm hoping that the show isn't that. I will. I might have to peek. And give are it you going to watch it? Okay. I might when just it? needle drop. It's It started on Thursday night. Oh on ABC. They took over Randy's Donuts and turned it into a golden bachelor donut. And they also went to Pink's Hot Dogs and turned it into a golden bachelor. So it was Truck Stop and Diner was pushing this show. <laughs> Every the marketing, classics. yeah. The classics. All right, number Please. six. <laughs> number six. This is something that everyone can enjoy, I think. I watched Chimp Empire on Netflix, okay? It's I'm all ears. Part. <laughs> it's a four-part docu-series and it is gorgeous 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 to look at it's the story of a vast community of chimpanzees in the ugandan jungle as they navigate complex social political politics and family dynamics in dangerous territory disputes okay the photography is jaw-dropping okay it's all this drone footage they've been filming for 25 years but it's just i mean it looks absolutely spectacular mahershala ali is the is the narrator and he talks in this asmr voice like mm -hmm. he's really there like he's like like he's going to disturb the chimps if he talks above a whisper and it is so perfect if you put it on before going to bed i'm just telling you right now that this is the apps and he's narrating these stories okay and they give all the chimpanzees names Okay, and it's like Venus and Tuk Tuk and Bongo and, and Miriam. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody has a name. Is there a Bubbles? There, I don't know if there is a Bubbles, but there, there's like Buck Buck and, and Tutu and all this stuff. <laughs> and they start, they start doing these things where it's like they'll say Venus and Bongo are still clearly upset about the banana incident from last <laughs> week. And over here we have Tuk Tuk who is contemplating uh, invading the chimpanzees from a, a mile away. And it's like, how do you know that that's what they're talking about and that's what they're thinking about? But they have these in elaborate plot lines going with all the chimps that they're just making up but i bet like as you watch it you're like yeah that well, does seem to be what's answer, happening at the time i'm like well yes of course. venus looks like she's pissed off she's right. pissed off with buck buck and then you know and you can obviously is over the banana when she still ate the banana that was meant for the daughter you know like that but but you don't really know but you buy into it every single second you really do it's like noodles the pooch james it is, it is, because when I tell you that, like, you, you laugh and you cry and you believe these storylines, it's like a soap opera, because, and then at one point, there's, there's a war between these two chimp empires, and then they, they kill this one monkey and they eat it, and I mean, just, it's uh, just drama, drama, drama. There's but our also, cannibalism for the episode. Yeah, there, yeah, yes, there is, yeah, cannibalism, but it's, um... It's just, it's just fascinating, and I, I, I don't believe a word of it, and yet I'm sucked into every second of it, and I just think that you would love her, Mahershala Ali's voice to put you to sleep every night. I love that, and I bet you there is a different, there's probably 97 languages versions of it on Netflix around the world. Oh, right? I'm sure, I'm sure, <laughs> but it's, it's very calming, and it's so beautiful. I mean, like, literally, it makes you want to move to a jungle and live with a chimpanzee. <laughs> so beautiful to look at be and, our and guest <laughs> they get right up into their faces i don't know how the cameras do it but i mean literally you see every crinkle and every laugh line and every you know expression on the, i mean they're so expressive it's just it's a fascinating show chimp Empire. i love that you felt the need to, to soften wrinkles into laugh lines in case there was a chimp watching that didn't you well, know <laughs> that's, a when laugh line. that's when tuck tuck decided it was time to go get a tuck tuck <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that is chimp empire streaming yeah. on netflix number five number five rosie o'donnell has a podcast uh it's mm. called onward and this week's her guest was lyle menendez of oh, yeah. the menendez brothers eric and lyle are still in prison the last yeah. interview lyle gave was in 2017 so what's that like six years ago and what has happened since then, especially earlier this year, was that one of Menudo came out and said that he had been raped by uh, Jose Menendez, Eric and Lyle's father, in their New Jersey home. 
And um, that is the story of that is told in a, a docuseries, Menendez and Menudo, Boys Betrayed, which I think is on Peacock. But the, the consequence of this is that maybe, I mean, I almost think certainly yes, in that second trial, because they were tried twice, uh, the wrong verdict was reached. And that certainly does seem to be the case. And it was so interesting hearing Lyle, because even when the, the, the story was everywhere in the, in the 80s and, and, you know, when the trials were going on, um, there was something about Lyle that seemed a bit cocky or something, or just, just something. I think he studied law, he's married, and he was just such a... I, I literally just started crying listening to the interview, not because it was filled, of, filled with sentimental self-pity. He was just so articulate and empathetic and wise. And in, you know, that they've been separated ever since they were convicted, they've been separated, but recently they were moved so they could be in the same prison together. And I think this was why I was so moved because Lyle, Lyle had married and he left his wife behind, even though his wife lived near the prison he was in, he left his wife behind to be with his brother in the prison that his brother's in. And I, I, it's worth repeating that, you know, Lyle was sexually abused by his father for a, a couple of years, from six years old to eight years old. And then Eric, from 12 years old to 18 years old, was in this incestuous abusive relationship with his father and it no it wasn't voyeuristic in the least it wasn't you know tell me all the details it wasn't exploitative it was well, just I mean, very Rosie, very tell moving me about, tell me about rosie's interview style i mean i i love rosie she was and great I think, yeah, she was great it made me realize how much i miss her and what a great yeah. interview she was and yeah. um it, it, it was it, it's from prison. Uh, it's so it's over the phone, and and Rosie left in all the interruptions. Like this call is being recorded, and they only allow prisoners to speak for a certain amount of time before they have to hang up and call back. And she left all that in, so it felt very, it felt very intimate. Is this the first of many podcasts, or is this? Uh, has she been doing the podcast for a while? How can we? Yeah, find she's the been podcast? doing it for a while. Uh, it's on. Um, oh, is it iHeart or Heart Radio? I, I mean, Radio it's Radio. You, you just type in podcast, and it, it'll come up. Google it, bitch. Yeah, I, um, I, I do. I've always been a fan of, of Rosie's, and I, I love what she does. And I'm, I'm. She's sure always seemed to, to have these career explosions or these moments where she couldn't keep doing it, and that always kind of brought me down. But she, it doesn't take away from her brilliance. And you know, yeah. we live in a world now where you can sort of do it on your own, and yeah. that suits her better. So she, she is a special woman. And she uh, first befriended the Menendez brothers, I think, um, in 96, actually, because Lyle wrote her a letter because Rosie herself came from a difficult background and they sort of bonded over that, obviously very different circumstances. And what's new now, James, as you say, it's not just a Menudo thing, but also they found a letter that Eric wrote to one of his relatives that had been lost mm. in storage for 23 years. And in it, uh, Eric describes the, the the fact that there's an abusive relationship going on, and this was six months before the murder. So, the the opportunity is not for a retrial because that 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 isn't possible. But the something called a habeas, where a judge will look at this new evidence and decide if had that been known at the time or been allowed to be part of the trial, would the ver verdict have been different? And the judge has the power to reduce the sentence or void the sentence altogether. So I kind of, I think there's been this groundswell of support from, especially on TikTok. Mm, people yeah, who've the TikTok watched, Nation really is the one who sort of got everything yeah. all rolling on this. Because if you watch the trial in its entirety and it's on Court TV on YouTube, it's hard not to feel they probably were telling the truth about what was going on, you know? song well right. actually it actually motivates the murder which it doesn't otherwise it right. doesn't really make sense yeah well, yes. do you think there will be a, a a lifetime movie part two where we reunite uh, nico and uh mike and yeah. Michael? one lifetime movie is enough for a, <laughs> a lifetime <laughs> that was a once in a lifetime <laughs> lifetime movie 
Yeah, so uh, you, you know, I set you up like, for that line. It's like you've been practicing it for years. <laughs> I go through the whole segment, James, about being self-serving or self-referential to <laughs> Menendez Blood Brothers, the movie that Randy and I directed for Lifetime, that basically says, yes, they were victims of sexual abuse and were... Well, it wasn't that they were innocent of the crime, but that, as Tom says, it was... Maybe you understood. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. You've got to get your Wow Presents Plus subscription now because in addition to Drag Race UK season five, thank you. Yeah, season five, which is now on Wow Presents Plus, we've got Drag Race Italia coming October 13th. And um, as well as, of course, Drag Race Germany is continuing, Drag Race Philippines, Drag Race Brazil. So it's a, a big drag fest over at wowpresentsplus.com. Stay tuned. We are counting down the top 10 things of the week that made us go, wow, we have a very special number one that we will reveal. We'll be right back after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. Fenton here with Tom and James and Blake. We're counting down the top 10 things of the week that made us go, wow, we've reached number four. Number four. The benefit of doing this radio show is I don't have to write thank you notes anymore. I can just say them directly to you. Fenton, thank you so much for last night. I was lucky enough to attend a World of Wonder party in the in the gallery space downstairs, a place where James has hosted so many world Why fancy was events. Why invited? Well, it was the uh, RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 5 oh, US well, Obviously, I wouldn't be party. to that. I don't know why you were invited, invited James. I you was were. not. I've never seen. I was not invited at all. We've only <laughs> talked about it every week on this show for the past month. Well, he definitely doesn't the listen party? to me on this show. <laughs> You've yeah. talked about the party R every day. Of yes. RSVP at events at worldofwonder.net. It was, it was almost as good as some of James's past parties. It had <laughs> porn stars, drag queens, uh, award-winning uh, feature directors, uh, documentarians, hipsters. There was there were thongs and 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 chaps. And our hosts, our official hosts, all the way from the UK, were Cheryl Hole and Blue Hydrangea, who not only hosted, they performed. There was a preview of the first episode. Um, Abdi came. Abdi's a wonderful writer. Who we know brought his two children who love Drag Race. And um, it was, it was just so great to be, I stood outside with Marin a lot. She was doing the door and I sort of need a job at a party or I don't like, I get, you know, I don't know what to do after the small talk. So I just, I stayed with her as she checked people in. I made just like what I call now granddad jokes to people. I'd be like, excuse me, before you go, in, I just want to warn you, there are drag queens that have been spotted in the neighborhood, but I, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going. Or put your, put your wallets in your front pockets. There's, been, there's drag queens in there. Um, <laughs> it was just joyous. It was, a, it was, it was. You know, I know we're not post COVID, but it was post pandemic, post isolation, you know, fun back to back to fun. And it's just so good to see people and check in. And even though it's it's not superficial, but, you know, it's just being social again, which I guess I'm that out of practice. I think we were serving House of Love cocktails unless I'm mistaken. Right. I said to some people who've just, you know, become part of the wow family i'm like i said if these walls could talk you know because i've been here now 17 years and i know before that but like this room has held so many parties and art show you know before there was the because now it's, that was about the wow wow pp and rupaul's drag race and we had our own cocktails i said we used to have these where we had like rot gut vodka and we still had a lot of fun you know and someone end up sleeping on a couch in the back room or something well, about <laughs> chuck two buck chuck from tra tra trader yes Dead. and i was the one to sleep on the couch there you I go. thought it was Randy who slept on the couch. I wasn't going to say, oh, that. did Randy sleep with you? Is that what happened? No. <laughs> no. no. Oh, my screen like froze. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, James, I can't believe you. How could you not know? There's, you're, aren't you on the email list that goes out to all of I us? I guess not. James, you are. And we, it has been a promo for the last goodness knows how many weeks. But, you know, you know those things I read out when we go to break? You never you're said there was going to be a party that we all <laughs> needed to go to. You never <laughs> once said there was a party. I'll roll the tape in the edit. <laughs> After you hang up, James, we do all the promos about the parties. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> we just oh. have a screenshot of you like. 
James, it's okay. <laughs> you can watch the premiere of RuPaul's Drag Race UK now on Where Presents Plus, and then you can watch the aftershave with Danny Beard, which is the uh, season four winner, beloved season four winner, Danny Beard, sits down to discuss the drama, gossip, and realness for all things Drag Race UK. That's it's a great more. venue for him. He's a great talker. He's a funny person. I, he's really talented. Also, Leland was up at the Fringe Festival and saw Danny Beard. A lot of the Queens had shows, but Danny Beard had a show and singing voice. Danny Beard, again, there's so many talented Queens from all corners of the earth, but the UK has some really spectacular Queens. Mm. All right, moving on to number three. Number three. This is a two part uh, uh, thing that I want to talk about here because every year, on social media, there is uh, a, a hue and cry among young gays when they discover the Folsom Street Festival. And they are, oh, it's disgusting. Oh, there's fisting. Oh, people are eating ass on in broad daylight. What if the children see? What if a straight couple walks past? Well, okay, it's a ticketed event, 21 and up. It's in, uh, it's in an enclosure, okay? There, it's fenced off. Children are not wandering in. It's consenting adults doing, you know, showing their their love of kink and their pride of of being who they are. It's, I, I think it's a wonderful expression of, of what it's been going on for forty years now. It started as a, uh, a in the AIDS epidemic, a way to reclaim your sexuality, a way to reclaim yourself. Well, and nudity uh, is uh, is legal. Nudity is legal in San Francisco, in San exactly. Mm -hmm. And it, who really? I mean. Who really cares at this point? They also say, were saying, you know, one of the people on Instagram, well, what about the people who bought condos and they have to look down upon it? If you buy a condo on Folsom Street, you are, you, you know what you're doing. You're doing it for a reason. Well, this ha! year, there was a very specific outrage when uh, a picture of a man covered in shit, a uh, harness and, you know, and he was covered in shit and he had written shit on his chest in shit. And he did it because he said um, it's his art. It's his kink. And he has a, a phobia of being touched. And he didn't like that people were giving him unwanted hugs in Folsom. And so he thought if he covered himself with shit, that that would be a way to repel people from giving him unwanted touch and, and hugs and everything like that. Now, more power to you, right? But people were like, I, I'm suing you for making me see this. And, you know, all these young queens who don't really, you know, are they're very young and they're very inexperienced. And so these things really traumatize. I'm traumatized by this. I'm unfollowing you. It went on and on and on and on. Well, the thing is, you know, it's poop. We all see poop every single day. It's, you know, you see poop, you see puke, you see snot. I mean, it's just body, you know, it's, who cares? And I am from an era where we would watch Lady Hennessy Brown lactate on people. We would see Karen Finley <laughs> shove yams up her vagina. That's true. You know, yeah. I mean, like Ron Athey with his, with his blood work, you know, he was always cutting, you know, hanging from fish hooks. Things like that. I do, it takes a lot to really gross me out. And Scott, Scott, you know. <laughs> Scott, if I may speak on Ella Fitzgerald's uh, behalf, Scott, um, it's it's a line crosser for some people. It's but just, it, but I, it shouldn't be because it, you, if you look in your toilet every day, you're going to see scat. I mean, what oh, I is don't. so gross about scat? What is so gross about poop? I mean, it's first just, of all, it, first of all, I use a litter box. Second, <laughs> um, um, I because I think we're supposed to be repelled by it, so we like our our primalness won't indulge but in. real i mean come on we're all adults and it whatever i agree i think if you're do, going and walking on the wild side you you should you, be if you're at Folsom, then you deserve to see yes. everything that, that you yes. don't go to Folsom. A, go to gay days at disney i have a question though um to repel unwanted hugs that just seems a little like well, it, I would rather have hugs than a bunch of flies swarm around me, personally. <laughs> but, That's but I mean, I, right. I think that if you go to Folsom, I think one of the most interesting parts of it is to see all the yes. extremes. To see, mm. to see a world that is not yours or to see something that, that, that pushes your, your sense of like, oh, is, is that... That yes. someone likes that. Someone and we were likes just praising John Waters' work, which includes uh, some uh, some exactly. Some poop we could do. If you watch Pink Flamingos, then you can you can go to fault. You can see this on your Instagram. Yes. And did 
Did you used to ever travel with a car bingo? It was a game where it'd be like, oh, we passed a cow and you close a little window. Oh, right. Okay. And, and, and then yeah. you play bingo. There should be Folsom bingo. And one of them should be <laughs> someone covered in poo. Oh, or or being fisted. Or, you know. Oh, but, All yeah. right, you guys. Cut the shit. <laughs> oh, Folsom bingo. Ding, 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 ding. All right. That's number three. Shitty story. Folsom outrage. Number two. We're going to keep with this poopy theme. Number two. Slippery slope. Yeah, they have in China invented a truly self-cleaning toilet. And by that, I mean the surface of the loo that they've developed is so slippery, nothing sticks to it. But how much does your poo really stick to your toilet anyway? James, it can sometimes <laughs> cling to the bowl. And uh, and I'm you reading. Now this is too, you've gone too far. This is disgusting. <laughs> what about the children? What about the children? You. I am reading here from Advanced Engineering Materials. It says that it's not only unpleasant for bathroom visitors and cleaners alike. It actually wastes a significant amount of water as more mm. flushes are required. And this I did not know, but this is fascinating. In that, do you know how this should be a question from Blake actually? How many liters of fresh water are used globally every day to flush toilets? How many? 141 billion liters every day. And I'm so grateful. Ugh, life before indoor plumbing. Why? Why? No, this new, Tell us about it. This new toilet, well, you flush, but you don't have to flush as much because nothing sticks. It's the it's the ultimate Teflon thing. And it's it's made of, let me make sure I get this right. It's abrasion-resistant, sl super slippery flush toilet, which is known as ARSFT. A-R-S-F-T. ARSFT. Um, the abrasion resistant super slippery flush toilet. Oh, well, now but tell me though, Fenton, what other applications could this have? I mean, can you use it for, for you know, some sort of war machines or for kitchens? You know, kitchens yeah. or, or blood or you know, for all operating. the body, all the body fluids you mentioned in the last story, you know, all the exactly, puking yeah. and the bleeding that you were talking about. Sure. Hospitals. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what? I mean, this is bad news for people who uh, make and sell uh, toilet plunger things. Sorry, toilet brushes. That, that's news. true too. Bad news. Um, the, the, the secret is uh, it, they use uh, plastic and hydrophobic sand grains fused with a laser-based 3D printing technique. And oh, the other thing is you can do a smaller bowl. I'm not quite sure how that works, but I think the idea is I'm not actually sure how that does work, but well, like Eastern nations the isn't there the bowl, the less the chance of something sticking to the side, it would just go yes, straight down. Exactly, it could just be like a tiny, a tiny, tiny bowl, so that if it hits the side, it. Right. Yes, I understand. I, I can understand this completely. It makes me want to go to those Eastern. Ever experienced those Eastern, like if you're ever in China, kind of like traditional toilets where they're just holes in grounds. Yes. Suddenly, mm -hmm. those make a lot of sense. No scrubbing there. Footprint ones where you have to like kind of squat and that. Like if you're not in shape, like uh, your uh, your legs really ache up there. Yeah, yeah. By the end of the week, you are. Yeah. yeah. You probably read a lot less in there than you would sitting down in your toilet. You certainly do. Exactly. You guys, we have a guest coming up. That's. I think the guest may have left after hearing the last two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's still around. Very excited to reveal the number one thing this week that made us go wow after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and Blake, of course. And we've been counting down the top 10 things that make us go wow. And we've reached number one. Number one. Ryan Raftery, Mother of the Year. You are bringing it, your musical about Kris Jenner, to L.A. I'm bringing it to the motherland, only out of the hopes that one of them will show up. I was going to say, God, can you imagine if Kris Jenner actually comes? She's got to hear about it. It's, no, I, 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 know know. For, I know for an absolute fact that they um, that Chris certainly knows about it. Chloe has commented on Instagram about it. Um, but who knows if they'll show up? I, I think 
I mean, obviously it would be very exciting, but they would eat that room up. Everybody would watch them watch the show, but that is a it's great problem. True. Yeah, nobody would pay an ounce of interest to you. You, It would be, yes. It would be worth it in, in press weight. I, I would, yeah, it would be worth really it really for the really Instagram much. shot. Yes, if you could get a, a pose a picture with her. Well, or maybe they'll, or maybe they'll contact me and have me perform it in one of their front yards. I, I will do anything. <laughs> I am or literally, maybe. I am. Li it, it is a lot of work to bring a show from New York to LA, and I, I mean, I hope that they show up. But I mean, if they wanted me to perform it anywhere, I would do it for them. Well, or the maybe is, it'll it, just be Chris Jenner's lawyers coming to shut down the show. Oh no, her publicist, no, no, no. her publicist came in New York, and every I, it, I think this is obvious that this show, while it does take place in kind of a fantasy world, it is through the prism of an ardent fan. I mean, she is right up there. When it comes to how we see our world, she is right up there with marketing geniuses like Steve Jobs, David Ogilvy, Walt Disney, and P.T. Barnum. She has changed the landscape. And what, now, regardless of how you feel about what she's selling, you cannot not have respect for what this woman has accomplished with a sex tape. Music well, to Tom's ears. It's true. Uh, because Tom has a sex tape that he's trying to push? Oh, I didn't know that. because you both worship at the Church of Kardashian. Well, I mean, I don't necessarily love what they're selling, but you, I cannot not have respect for how she's done it. I mean, I do, as you're aware, and by the way, first off, thank you again for having me on. World oh. of Wonder has been phenomenally supportive of me, and I am endlessly appreciative of it. And... Um, when I when I research when I do these shows, I do a lot of research on the people. And what I learned about Chris is what well, was so fascinating. Number one, did you know that when um, Robert Kardashian first proposed to her, she wasn't even twenty years old yet, and she said no. And they dated for a little while, but then when he wouldn't marry her, he broke up with her and started dating Priscilla Presley. Who and then he and then Robert Kardashian left Priscilla because Elvis was still alive and Elvis was calling in the middle of the night when they were in bed and he's like I can't do this. Then he went back to Chris who was a little bit older and then they got married. But when Chris and Robert Kardashian divorced, Chris had gotten very used to being very rich and then all of a sudden she was like, "Whoops, what do I do?" And then she got set up with Caitlyn. And Caitlin was down on her luck and was not making any money, was far away from the Olympian star of the of the 80s. And it was Chris who got down on the floor of their apartment and created press kits and said, we have an Olympic gold medal we can capitalize on here and sent Caitlin out on the lecturing circuit. And what Chris was doing was practicing and getting ready for when preparedness met opportunity and that was the sex tape. I believe that. And that is a song in my show set to I Could Have Danced I, All Night from My Fair Lady. And if that does not sell tickets, <laughs> this is well. like people should lip sync the speech just now. This is like when the nights went down in Georgia. That's like, a, like, well, the thing is, though, uh, Ryan, is that with all the people that you choose, whether it's Martha or Anna or Chris or who or whoever or Andy Warhol or uh, Andy Cohen. Cohen. Yeah, I, I, you get the feeling that there is, uh, that there's no condescension there, and that you actually, actually appreciate and love them. Uh, you have to love them in order to do them every single night. You know, or at the very least, like I said earlier, you have to find a place of respect. And more than anyone, I found, I mean, I found love, more love than I ever expected to for Martha Stewart, and. I announced earlier on Instagram this, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm doing the Chris Jenner show in LA, October 19th and 20th at the Bourbon Room. Yeah. But then in February, I am doing Anna Wintour, bringing her back for the 10th anniversary. Anna Wintour, Martha Stewart, and Chris Jenner in repertory, a different show every night for three weeks. I have to ask you, so you're doing this trilogy. Yes, what is it it's those called, I'm calling it my Titans of Media Trilogy of Female Empowerment. Well. <laughs> I guess that possibly answers the question I was going to ask, which is what do they all have in common? What is the sort of common thread that unites them all? The common thread that unites all of them is in the Anna Wintour show, Chris Jenner, this happened by accident too, or maybe it's subconscious, but my Anna Wintour show is about how Chris Jenner basically harangued Anna Wintour within an inch of her sanity to put Kim and Kanye on the cover of uh, Vogue, which completely revolutionized Kim's um, reputation. 
And then the Martha Stewart show, Martha is so, I don't want to use, I don't want to use the word desperate. Martha is very um, into relevancy and Martha appeared on the Kardashians. Martha didn't even know who Chloe was in, and when they were filming, she was like, um, are you married? And she said it's a Khloe Kardashian with hundreds of millions of Instagram followers. Martha is also a marketing genius who sold us attainable perfectionism in the 80s and 90s, who dared America to try harder. And now we're in kind of, if you look at what Kim, what what Kris Jenner sells and what Martha Stewart sells, it's almost like in The Godfather 2. You have these two completely different stories of, of the ascension of one person and the descension of the other if that's a word, but um, Martha sold attainable perfectionism and Chris is selling, put on some makeup, put a filter on it. People will care about you more and who cares if they don't, you will sell. And I love that that is what Chris Jenner does better than anything else in the world. She sells, she keeps us talking about her. And Anna Wintour is the linchpin between the two because Anna is somebody who is an arbiter of taste. And, and when, when, when Anna put her stamp of approval on Kim Kardashian, that changed everything. Nobody would dress Kim Kardashian before Kanye came into the picture and legitimized her in the world of fashion people. And then Anna giving the imprimatur, that sealed the deal. Ryan, you got to write a book. I, I wanna... mean, do you know anything about writing a book, Fenton? Should we plug yours? Because I loved it. Screening, oh, available yes. everywhere books are sold. Yes, yes. I mean, the great thing about writing a book is no one reads it. And so you, I like, did. Well, I was just going to say, what? No, we don't need to write it. Nobody needs to write another book again because nobody reads books anyway. What you need is a Netflix three part series. You do. I you do would love more. that. I would yeah. love nothing more. I mean, I, I think that there's there's a lot of when people come to see my shows and when people understand what I'm doing, it really it makes me so excited because all of these shows, while there I am a comedian and there is a funny kind of twist to all of it the very last um song in the chris jenner show is a parody of miley cyrus's song the climb and um i'm sure you know it but but chris's song says look at how i've influenced your daughters don't you know they want to look like mine they'll buy any kind of shit i sell them your insecurity is my gold mine and it's true it's all up now our, our society today is all about likes it's all about external um, affirmation from people that we've never met before. And that is such a fascinating thing to me that we live in this world where so many more people are famous. And all of my shows spill from one into the next. And the Andy Warhol show was all about that and how Andy was the first influencer ever and how Andy made being famous more famous. It's just, um, and they all kind of like spill into each other. And that's definitely done on purpose. Well, what's next? What are you going to, which is going to be your next oeuvre? I really want to write um, a show about the create, the writing session that created All I Want for Christmas is You because ah. Mariah, Mar Mar Mariah Carey and Walter, I can't pronounce his last name, F. Natasef, they, they both have 50% ownership over that song. They both have very different ideas about who came up with what. They didn't talk for 20 years. And then a couple of years ago, Mariah wanted to rec uh, release a children's book based on the song. Yeah. And she had to call Walter. And I, I heard a podcast um, that he did recently where, you know, there's a lot of animus between them. And I think that could be fascinating. She would be a huge mm -hmm. challenge to um, perform a show. But, I mean, I know I, I, I'm respectful. You've of the got the voice. You could do it. I mean, well, I don't I have that. The whistle sure. tones. The whistle tones. I can't. I can't do that. We'd have to have like a sound cue or something, or maybe someone can like kick me in the nuts and like I can <laughs> do it. And I, I'm that method. I would have someone do it every show. <laughs> Ryan, we could talk to you all day. We should just do a whole Ryan show. Oh man, I would just love Ryan. that. Yes. That would, um, that would be. Uh, that would, I mean, I'm a Leo, Leo rising. I would love nothing more than that kind of attention from this panel. Once a week. I would love it. Ah, yes, every week. I love it. Um, you can see the full interview with Ryan um, that's not cut down for radio on our YouTube Wow Presents channel or worldofwonder.net slash Radio Andy. Um, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I love all three of you. And um, I'm pleased to send everyone you know to see the Chris Jenner musical in Los Angeles, October 19th and 20th at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood.
You're the best I plugger. I can't wait. That's so fabulous. Yay. Love you, Ryan. Great guy. Love you, Well, thanks for tuning in to the WOW Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. Previous episodes are on our YouTube channel, WOW Presents. Same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. wow.